Hi everyone. Today I have a patient case where the patient suffered a MAC off retinal detachment and she lost her vision completely and then had the retinal detachment repaired, after which she developed a very big cataract. And then uh, today we're gonna remove her cataract and put in a lens implant. And it's very important that anytime you do surgery on a patient that had a MAC off retinal detachment, you have to make sure that they have realistic expectations. Even with the best lens, they may notice some distortion in their vision. Here's the patient's cataract. There's dense nuclear sclerosis and a mostly non-reactive pupil. There's also some corneal punctate keratopathy and sub-epithelial opacification. We can easily remove the cataract to help the patient's vision, but will the vision be good enough for the patient? Spoiler alert, today's video doesn't have a happy ending but I share it because it confronts the reality that some patients face, unfortunately, patients with retinal disease. This patient had a macula off retinal detachment. This is in contrast to a macula on retinal detachment. According to the retina specialist, the patient also had an epiretinal membrane with a full thickness macular hole. The macula is the center of the retina, and if that portion of the retina is still attached, at the time of retinal detachment repair, the prognosis for high quality vision after surgery is much higher. However, if the macula is off or already detached by the time of the retinal detachment repair, then the prognosis for good quality vision is significantly worse. In this patient's case, the macula was off, meaning that it was detached for about three weeks prior to repair. That's a long time to have the macula detached. Although it was reattached surgically, the function of the macula was significantly compromised. The patient also had a history of a macular hole and epiretinal membrane and had pars plana vitrectomy to fix that as well. Of course, we still do our best. We perform meticulous cataract surgery. And no matter how poor the prognosis, we approach every case with hope. This patient's vision was hand motion upon presenting with her retinal detachment. It did improve to counting fingers vision after retinal detachment repair. This cataract is large and we hope she'll see a meaningful improvement in her vision with cataract surgery. But we must establish realistic expectations for this patient and educate the patient about how their previous ocular history can affect the outcome of their vision despite cataract surgery. The same principles apply when performing surgery with any comorbidity, whether amblyopia or lazy eye, glaucoma, optic neuropathy, diabetic retinopathy, corneal disease. The eye needs to function well as a whole, and that's why before performing cataract surgery, it's important to have a discussion with the patient about their overall eye health. Fortunately, we did not encounter any problems with her cataract surgery. Everything went routine. I opted not to perform laser-assisted cataract surgery and to implant a basic monofocal IOL. The patient was willing and able to pay for femtosecond laser-assisted cataract surgery, but I didn't recommend it because the only thing worse than having blurry vision after cataract surgery would be blurry vision after cataract surgery and having spent thousands of dollars out of pocket on top of one's health insurance coverage. Subtle differences from the laser or improvements from an adjustable monofocal lens like the light adjustable lens would not have been noticeable to this patient and so therefore I did not offer it. I don't think femtosecond laser would have caused any harm for her and perhaps it would help some surgeons with certain portions of the procedure, but I think it would be wrong knowing her history and that it would not impact her final vision to charge beyond the cost for the laser. Am I wrong? What do you guys think? Now we still want to provide her with the highest quality surgery, but without adding a cost burden to the patient. So we're going to do a meticulous job. That means still polishing the posterior capsule, sweeping the anterior capsule to ensure that it's very clean, and making sure that her basic monofocal lens implant is very well centered. Now if we don't polish the posterior capsule thoroughly or sweep the anterior capsule, will it be noticeable to the patient? Probably not, but it's not adding a cost burden to the patient or surgeon to do so, so I just do it. Next, I'm going to power wash the posterior capsule with BSS. I find that this decreases the chance 
of needing a YAG capsulotomy in the early postoperative period. Then I'm filling the capsular bag with cohesive viscoelastic and sweeping the anterior capsule with my Singer Sweep polisher. I'm really hoping that this patient finds meaningful improvement of her vision. I know it's not going to be as good as the vision in her other eye. So even if there is some improvement, she may not notice it, but we got to hope for the best. And now I'm going to implant the lens. This is a monofocal lens on the Envista platform from BNL. It is hydrophobic. I do like how it unfolds predictably without the haptics getting stuck. It has eyelets and is glistening free. Next, we're going to remove the viscoelastic gel from the eye. The removal should be thorough to decrease the risk of a postoperative pressure spike in the eye. Also, search for any residual lens fragments in the eye. After that, we ensure that the IOL is well centered. We hydrate our incisions, ensure that the eye pressure is normal, and ensure that the incisions are watertight. Unfortunately, the patient's vision improved only to about 2200. Yes, better than before, but not very noticeable to the patient given that she depends heavily on her other eye. Nonetheless, we want every eye, including this eye, to perform at its best because we don't know what the future holds. God forbid something happens to the other eye. She may depend on this one. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.